from his like from the volume and the danger that he is right. from beyond the arc and then with how much of a streaky shooter can that he can be and all the different ways that he can affect scoring I honestly think there's a real chance we could be looking at Sadiq as one of the more terrifying marksmen in the NBA. Yeah, in his second season, he he has a you know career high ten threes made. So there's those Clay Thompson. I'm not saying he's Clay Thompson, but those esque he can get hot quickly. What is going on? I want to welcome you from half court today. Joined as always by my partner in crime, the Robin to my Batman, the Dikembe to my Charles Barkley. My God, Jeff, I afraid you. Jeff, how's it going, man? Man, it's going. What an introduction, man. I mean, this guy's impressive. I mean, if you guys if you guys think that was it, please drop a like. Slap the like button for that one. I mean, that was impressive. But I'm doing good, Sean. Uh, it was a good night. We got a lot of things planned uh, this week and uh, in general. So I'm excited. Everyone tuning in. Special oh. things coming, man. Big, oh. big things. Oh, most certainly. We doing really big things. We doing really <laughs> big drink. Okay, I'm not a rapper. Anyway, but with that. <laughs> it's got a fire, though. That, <laughs> but with that, uh, Jeff, I, I kind of came to you with a video idea a few minutes ago. And at first, he kind of looked at me a little weird, like, what are you even talking about? But then once we actually did some research looking into this topic, you realized how crazy this is. And the question I posed to you is that, is Sadiq Bey already the best three-point shooter in Pistons history? Which I know from gut feeling, it's like, <laughs> what the f are you talking about? But hold on, Jeff. Because not only is Sadiq Bey already have the single season record for three point shooting for three point makes in a single season, he's already thirteenth all time on the on the team's three point shooting list. Around around guys, by the way, he's he is twelve threes away from surpassing Isaiah Thomas on the Pistons' all time three point shooting list and with that i want to start with this question jeff number one what does this tell us about the game of basketball where it's been where it's going and also is sadiq already the top man because there's a legitimate case he could be and that's terrifying yeah in terms of attempts and you bring up the nba like that's Blame analytics. This is where the NBA is going. It's where it's been going. Blame Steph Curry, too, because he's changed the game as well. But with Sadiq Bey, though, it's crazy to put it in perspective. Like it, Reggie Jackson in six seasons, he attempted 1,323 threes. Sadiq in two seasons has attempted 1,070. Mm -hmm. So in four less seasons, he's almost attempted the same amount of threes as Reggie Jackson. That, and that says a lot about who Sadiq is as a player, as a three-point shooter. So to answer your question, I guess it's a projection. He'll be the best. Like, look at yeah. this. And if we just go down all the way all the time, we can go up to, you know, as high as you know, Joe Dumars at 90, uh, 990. He's number one. If you project Sadiq Bay, he's 13th with 386 threes in, in two seasons, by the way. Give him another two seasons. If he has that same pace, Sean, with 398, he's already basically two. So we're, we're talking four seasons. He's already one or two on the list. So by the by the end of his career, if he stays a long time in Detroit, no doubt about it. And, and it says a lot about where the game is changing, too, because in today's NBA, that's Sadiq. He might have, you know, 14 shot attempts. Nine of them might be threes. Like that, mm -hmm. that's just how it, it that's just how it goes in today's game. So to answer the question, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think the other thing that's interesting, though, when you look at this list, because there's a lot of really good shooters that are on this list, but at the same time, there's like not there's not really any like three point specialists on here. <laughs> yeah. Like if you look at like yep. the history of the, the of the Detroit Pistons, they've never really been a team that's went really went out there and gotten their like their sniper from beyond the arc. Obviously, they had guys like Rip and and Chauncey who could hit an outside shot. They, they definitely could. It wasn't their primary part of their game. I mean, Chauncey's second all-time in, in three-point makes on the team. Joe Dumars is number one. Joe Dumars is only there because he played he played 14 seasons. He only attempted, you know, it sounds like a lot, but he only attempted 2,500 in 14 years. So, like, that just shows, like you said, analytics has just brought us to a point where, you know, the three-point shooting is just at a different level. But even if you look within the team, Jeff, like, a guy who was on the team those two years as well, Jeremy Grant. Uh, in those in that same time, Sadiq Bay attempted a thousand and seventy threes, right? Mm -hmm. Jeremy Grant attempted five hundred and eighty three. 
So not only is Sadiq taking a lot more, they're wanting Sadiq to take a lot more because he can hit him at a pretty remarkably good clip. Right. And that's the one thing with Sadiq too. Like we always talk about it. It's the inconsistency, but watch when he becomes consistent. He can consistently knock down open shots from three. That guy, I mean, in 300 and what, 86 was it? And, and, and now he's 13, 386. Like that's, that's insane. And it, it kind of puts it into perspective. You brought it up. Like the, if you look at the top, like even Joe Dumarge, number one, he had in 14 seasons, Chauncey and Rip, like two guys that, yeah, could knock down a shot, but they specialize in the mid range. Like same with a lot of people, a lot of players back then. It's just not how the game works. So now with the three point shot becoming more significant and more valued, everybody's looking for the guy who can knock down three, Sadiq, a guy who fits that mold and, and can shoot a lot of them and will make a lot of them at a, you know, 36% clip and projected. That's who will be like 38, 39%. Dude, he's going to blow this list out of the water. If he could play a long time in Detroit, there's no doubt about it. And then, you know, in the future, there might be someone else who knows. But even to say, to put it in perspective, too, you brought up um, you brought up Jeremy Grant. Like, if you want to bring up Blake Griffin, too, like, Blake on this list is 18th. Like, yeah. and he, in, in 138 and games. And he wasn't, he wasn't a three-point marksman no, by any means. Right. Like, and, and he played in 138 games for Detroit and attempted, you know, 892. So, Sadiq, though, his, his archetype, the type of player he is, um, to be able to knock down threes and attempt a lot of threes, to be efficient at it, he's special, man. He, he mm -hmm. really is. Do you think – there's ever a time that we could be talking about Sadiq Bay as a top five three point shooter in the league. Cause I really think as far as like, maybe not from like a, uh, like a, from like a percentage standpoint, but like from, from his, like from the volume and the danger that he is right. from beyond the arc. And then with how much of a streaky shooter can, that he can be in all the different ways that he can affect scoring. I honestly think there's a real chance we could be looking at Sadiq as one of the more terrifying marksmen in the NBA. Yeah, in his second season, he he has a you know career high 10 threes made. So there's those Clay Thompson. I'm not saying he's Clay Thompson, but those esque he can get hot quickly. You know, a guy who can knock down a shot. It doesn't matter. Like if he's hitting, he's hitting. And with Sadiq, he's gonna get plenty of more opportunities. He's gonna, he's gonna get even more open looks. Jay Nivey, Cade Cunningham, more playmakers already with Killian Hayes, of course. But it's it's not if he'll get them. He's going to get them. It's if he can knock it down, and he's already a great shooter. So it's a scary – I mean, that's – just in general, the Pistons, that's why J.J. Redick hit on it, man. They're one of the most attractive young cores in the NBA because they have such good positional players like Sadiq. Everybody's looking for Sadiq. And, and to your point about being a top three-point shooter, with with the amount he attempts, if he can get the consistency higher and the percentages higher, Sean, you're not – I mean, that that's pretty legitimate. Yeah. Yeah. No question. And – this is a guy that isn't one dimensional on the offensive end. This is a guy that, right. that has shown increasingly that he can score at all three levels. And so even though like, like you could even make a case like his attempts might go down just because he might be trying to like, you know, diversify his scoring a little bit more, but more Jeff, efficient. he might be more efficient. Though. Yeah, He might be more efficient, but in addition though, Jeff, he might get more easy looks because there's going to be guys like Jaden Ivey out there that are going to take the pressure and have that NBA spacing to dish it out to the perimeter. Mm -hmm. You're going to have guys like Cade that are still going to be out there and open up opportunities for you. But then even there's more guys like Isaiah Stewart that you have to worry about on the perimeter as well. So when you're, when you're really looking, the reason why Sadiq was so heavily scouted against from beyond the arc was because he was really our only true threat from beyond the arc. So... Now, you know, if you look, if you make the case, well, Kate, there, you know, Cade's are not going to shoot worse than he, than he did last year. Not, not that he was a bad shooter, but you generally get better at that. Jaden Ivey, he's not going to be this amazing shooter coming into the league, but you got to at least respect him from beyond right. the arc. And then you're looking at this lineup and you're going, man, Sadiq could potentially cause even more damage. That's <laughs> the part where it's just, you truly try to predict this guy's trajectory and you can't because it's his work ethic. It's his style mm -hmm. of game. It's his, it's his mental fortitude. It's everything about this guy, man. It's just, you ask these questions in any other player, it makes you pause. And it's like, all right, we're being a little too quick, but Sadiq Bay, I don't know if we are. Yeah. And that's why, you know, especially with Sadiq too, I don't question if he'll get there. It's, it's almost like when he'll get there because of yes. his work ethic, you mentioned it, the, the mental fortitude too. like, I mean, hard work always succeeds over talent, but if you're talented and you work hard, 
that's a dangerous combination. And that's what Sadiq has too. And you mentioned it now with his teammates. Like even if he has the court, he shares the court with Isaiah Livers at times. Have two guys that can knock down shots regardless of where they are. That's going to get more open looks to first Sadiq. And that's mm-hmm. a scary combination. This guy got 50 this year with injuries. Imagine with the entire team playing in the game with him, allowing him to even get more open looks, uh, open looks from three, of course. It's it's just – that's why he's talked about right now as being a legitimate number three on this team because he can do that. Yeah, for sure. And I don't know about you, Jeff, but when you think about the three-point shooter, my head goes to the the Hito Turkaloos, the Andre Karolinkos, like – like kind of mm-hmm. like that crap, like even like JJ Redick, like the classic marksman of the, of the past, even, even Steph Curry to a certain extent, a lot of these three point shooters aren't the best athlete or might not have like the best physique. And like a lot of these three and D guys, like they're competent enough to shoot the three, but they're not elite at mm-hmm. it either. I think Sadiq might want to be those, what might be one of those rare combinations of physical strength and, and stature and also skill and ability and, and grace with shooting the ball, which we both know that's the bigger, the bigger boy you get that, that, that doesn't become easy. So, I mean, with all those challenges and everything, and just with everything else he brings to the table, man, I really do believe we could be looking at Sadiq as an all NBA type player one day. Mm -hmm. And a really good two way player. I think, I think he can get Mm -hmm. even better Mm -hmm. defensively. So that's the scary part about it. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah, uh, with oh my goodness, you, you you literally there's not a there's not a situation where Sadiq Bay is not valuable on the court. He's not a liability ever. He's always mm-hmm. making the right play. He's always making the right decision. And like you know, if he if he keeps going and, and you know gets to the point where we don't see those one of eleven or one of twelve nights from Sadiq all the time, it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> Just feels like it's, it's a wrap. wrap. Yeah, yeah, he, he he's gonna fill in what Jeremy Grant left pretty quickly. I'll tell you that. Oh. Most certainly. But the question is, do you think that we're being a little too quick on the Sadiq Bay, Sadiq Bay train? Where do you rank him among the best Piston shooters of all time right now? And where do you think ultimately we will be ranking him when it is all said and done? Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. But also, Jeff, did you know that 66% of people aren't subscribed from F4? What the f- going on? Guys. That's 66% too much. Please hit the subscribe button, man. We, we work hard on this content, and we'll be killing it. I, I know people in the comments are loving it, so uh, hit that sub button, please. And, yeah. and don't just leave it subbed. Leave it there. Slap mm-hmm. it and walk away from the computer. I mean, you're already watching anyway. Why not little, know when this button. awesome content is coming your way, people? But with that, we do want to thank you all so much for watching, and we want to yes. thank you in advance for hitting that subscribe button. We will catch you guys next time from half court.